are in Sierra County, about 5,900 feet. We are at the only known population of Darlingtonia in Sierra County. We're at the top of the Darlingtonia Glade. It spreads out up here, and then there's a stream running downhill, and there is Darlingtonia along the stream side as well. Geographically, we're north of the only site where we know of the forma viridiflora, but we're south of Butterfly Valley. What we're going to do now, this is a great opportunity since most of these plants are in flower, is we're going to start scanning around looking for any of the green flowered variants and also look for any indications of pollinators and also keep our eyes open for any other carnivores that we might find out here, like any Drosera or Utricularia. But it's a big glade, a lot of plants are in flower, but surprisingly all the plants are only about half size, so they really seem to be dwarfed by these conditions. Well, this is great. We thought we had surveyed the entire upstream population. We followed the stream up and then this field opens up into another huge field of Darlingtonia. This is probably the largest population of Darlingtonia that I know of that are in this part of the Sierra. A uh, high elevation, we're just around 6,000 feet elevation now. It's gonna open up. We haven't found any green flowered plants, but we're still looking got a huge new area to survey for some green flowered plants. This is very exciting. It's a very cool place. So this site has turned out to be a better location than we could have possibly hoped. Along this stream course that goes down the mountain, there's a whole set of little terraces, and each terrace has got its own little glade or little population of plants. We've been walking up the terrace, up the terraces, we think we've gone to the highest terrace. We're going to go back on down, we're going to take a look at each one of the glades. This is this top glade, it's kind of small, it's got a couple of populations of plants, and um, they're in good shape, and we're going to keep going all the way down and looking at each one of the glades in turn. This is glade number two. There aren't very many plants up here. There is an open glade area, and it does have some other darling stuff in it, like tiny white violets and little bitty buttercups. But the plants all seem to be along the stream side. Again, it's a very steep area, but there are still plants up here. striking to me about looking at these glades and especially in this glade here, the third glade, which is one of the most spectacular of all of them that we've seen so far, is that it looks like during the winter it's an extremely hostile environment. Everything looks like it gets cut down to the ground. The grasses have all been just denuded and the Darlingtonia, they don't have any 
fruiting stalks from the previous years. Usually when you go to a Darlingtonia site, you see old fruit from the previous year, the dead capsules pointing skywards. We don't see any of that here. Not even the snapped off bases of the old Darlingtonia flower uh, fruit. It's just everything's cut down to the ground. Some new pictures, some pictures from last, last year, but otherwise you're just seeing the new growth from the new flowers. Very hostile environment. Hooray! After looking all day for Drosura rotundifolia and coming up with nothing, we have finally found a lovely little population of the plants. Although we're confident that Andrenid bees are involved in Darlingtonia pollination, we don't know whether there are other things that pollinate the flowers. As we've walked through these glades, we've been checking the flowers and looking for signs that pollination may have occurred. We've been choosing different flowers and peeling back the petals to check the stigmas. And what we're finding is it doesn't look like pollination has occurred yet. The stigmas are clean and pristine. So here we are at the bottom of all the populations. We found um, six separate populations of plants. And from here on out, we haven't found any populations of plants. We're going to have to go looking in the future and seeing if we can find any other places. It's really strange though. Why aren't there any plants here? It looks very much the same. The ground's a little bit drier, maybe a little bit more compacted. There's a lot more sign of cattle around here. But we really, really don't know. Don't know why there aren't any plants over in this area. You might have seen that in the last shot, I was walking with a specimen in my hand and you're thinking, oh my gosh, he's collecting plants. Well, this is one of the things that you do in order to make sure that what you've got or what you've been doing has got scientific merit and value. Yeah, this specimen there. We'd take these specimens we've collected and honestly, I've, I've just taken a pitcher and in this case, a, uh, a flower, just voucher specimens. So we know we're talking about Darlingtonia. We're going to put them in this field press, smash them down and then preserve these in an herbarium. And these specimens, can you help me straighten this out? These specimens will last for hundreds of years um, and presumably will last longer than I will. And this way we've got permanent documentation about the fact that these plants are here, were here in 2011. Can't always guarantee that what's here now is going to be here in a couple of years, but at least we know that they were here at this point in time.